Hello everyone, welcome to a video about a great Django solo, exactly the same thing as I said in the previous video, but today is a special occasion because I think this is the first time I'm actually doing a solo that was suggested by one of my Patreon subscribers. Uh, from time to time people suggest solos, but I really have to like the solo myself to actually dive into it, and this is actually one of my favorite Django solos, I just never thought about doing it just because there are so many jungle solos you can get lost in the in the candy store of jungle solos but when this patron suggested this particular solo i immediately went for it and it's his amazing solo on the tune limehouse blues let's go <laughs> The solo consists of three choruses. The first two choruses are just a uh, regular improv. And then the third chorus is kind of a, a shout chorus, maybe. Uh, I think it's a little bit arranged. The violin also has a part in it, and then there are some really great licks in between those parts. So I'm going to do all three choruses. The first chorus right now, here on YouTube, and then the second and third chorus I will reserve exclusively for my patrons on YouTube patreon.com so if you want to have access to that uh, second and third course uh, the pdf with the tab and also videos of me running through all the links slowly and explaining everything like i'm going to do today then uh, you can join my patreon at the 10 euro level because i will be making those exclusive videos for that level and at the five euro level you can download the tab that you saw on screen today before we go to the phrases i wanted to share with you one um one funny anecdote about learning this solo. If you know the solo, maybe you notice that I skipped one iconic lick in the solo, and that's the, the fast uh, chromatic run up uh, the Django does often. It goes something like this. Right? Something like that is in the solo. It's very difficult to hear exactly which notes are being played because he's sliding all over the place. But it sounds great on the recording. And I really tried playing it. And normally I can play it. There's another video on my YouTube channel where I talk about the solo he plays on Charleston, and there was no problem. But the thing is, the tempo is so fast uh, to play this phrase that there was no way I could pull it off. And I, I spent many hours trying it, and finally I gave up, and I put this chord there. Because otherwise there would be no way for me to actually make a video about the solo. So don't think I don't like the lick or that I didn't even try. I tried it, but... I couldn't get it up to the standard I needed to be to make a video. So this chord is great, but uh, in retrospect, I think I would have really liked to play two chords. But okay, I'll talk about that in the next video. Um, a funny story about this phrase is that I remember once I had a gig with Stochelo, Stochelo Rosenberg, and I suggested we play the, the tune Running Wild, which is also uh, a tune that Django played. And I suggested we do the jungle version. So we play his arrangement, which has a solo break with this run. And, and you have to play that run because um, that really kind of defines that solo break. And then Stokolo didn't realize that before we played the tune and he was like, yeah, let's play it. And then he listened to the jungle recording and he got to this phrase and he said, um, okay, let's not do it. 
<laughs> so I figured if Stokolo thinks this uh, run is too tricky to play in fast tempos, then I have also a good excuse for not doing it. So there you go. That's the reason I didn't play that phrase. Now let's start with exploring the first phrase. <laughs> This is a very energetic solo, uh, full of exciting stuff, and it immediately starts with an exciting phrase. That repeating pattern in the beginning already uh, creates a lot of excitement. But then this lick, with all the open strings, it has a special sound to it. Now, of course, you can only do this on a C7 chord, uh, this exact phrase. It's basically just a G minor 6 arpeggio, with a with a 9 in there, so it would be a G minor 6 at 9. And of course, G minor 6 is the same thing as C7, even the same chord voicing, except the bass note changes. So G minor 6 and C7. But you can play phrases that you would normally play on G minor on C7 and vice versa. So here we have this G minor 6 arpeggio. Now, if you want to do that on another chord, let's say A7, that will be the next chord, you can still play it, but it's less exciting. Because then you'd have to play E minor 6 arpeggio. And ah, it sounds nice, but it's not as exciting as, as those open strings. So, whenever you have a long C7, this is a good phrase to remember. Let's move on to the next phrase. Before we go to the next phrase, I want to introduce you to my sponsor. This video is sponsored by my book, The Van Hamert System. It's a jazz guitar book I wrote in the beginning of the pandemic, and um, it has been selling very well. I'm getting great uh, reactions. There's also a very nice review that has been written. I will link the review in the description. So now I'm going to interrupt this video with a little commercial I made for this book last year. And after that, I will be right back with the next phrase. Here we go. Hello everyone, you just listened to a jazz guitar solo on the chords of the tune Ergin. If you are a guitar player and you always wanted to play jazz but had no idea where to start, I have a solution for you. I just released a book called The Van Hamert System, which describes the system I used myself to learn how to improvise like you just heard. The methodology is completely based on learning a couple of shapes across the guitar neck that will enable you to improvise on every jazz standard you can think of. Of course, it's gonna take a while to become proficient at playing those shapes and how to apply them, but you don't have to learn anything else. No music theory, no skills, no arpeggios, no fretboard identification, no ear training, just learning those shapes and how to apply them. That's what I did myself and you just saw the result. If you are interested in learning to play jazz guitar like that and you are in the US, order my book in the web store of jungleguitars.com and if you are in Europe, send a mail to this email address. Bye. Another super exciting phrase where he uh, uses some ghost notes and I, I wrote an open E string. Well, that's more or less what is happening. He might play uh, one less E open E string there, but this is an easy way to do it. So remember, three downstrokes on the A, so the first one, second, third, and then the upstroke. So you get down, 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 up. And you have to give those A's an accent and play that open E string softer. Now we get just an A7 arpeggio. So that's pretty standard, but then it ends with this 6 or 13 and 9. So that is a nice color. 
right after you play that, um, just playing a7 arpeggio. And that's another nice trick that you can use on any dominant chord. And it's very easy because, well, you basically you put your first finger on the root of the chord. Let's say it's c7. Very easy to play. Now notice that Django is not connecting the phrases on c7 and a7. Uh, it is a, a weird feature of this song that it starts on c7 for four bars and goes to a7. And there are several ways to deal with that odd chord progression. You could play uh, the same phrase on both chords and you move it down. Let's say you play on c7. And then for a7, you play the same. But you just move it three frets down. Uh, another option would be to try to connect them. So you play a phrase that goes over the bar line. So let's say you're on the on C7, the last bar. And now you're on A7. That, that would be more challenging connecting them. Or you could just play a C7 phrase and an A7 phrase. And that is what Django is doing here. But later on in the solo, he makes use of the other options. So we'll get to that. For now, let's go to the next phrase. There's lots of octaves in this solo, and that makes sense because the tempo is pretty fast. It's 285 beats per minute, and then um, octaves are a good antidote to the fast tempo. So you don't have to play eighth notes all the time, and you can just play some quarter notes, but then you have to give them some extra juice by making them octaves. Now, when Django plays octaves, usually when they're on the beat, he plays a muted upstroke before it, like this. But the tempo is so fast that he doesn't really do that. Except maybe for on the first octave. So you could do... And then just play straight octaves. But on the C, there's this little slide. But if you do it by itself, it sounds weird. But in the context of the phrase, it gives the lick some extra juice, some extra embellishments that um, make it really nice. So... Also notice the really uh, smart harmonic choices. It starts with an, well, a chromatic phrase. But the ends on the flat 9 on B7. And then the root 5. So you get... That's really a B7 altered. And then resolving to the 4 on E minor before going to the 3rd. That is, of course, uh, by itself a nice phrase to play on B7 to E minor with single notes, but with octaves it's even more powerful. And then we arrive at the next phrase. I love this particular phrase. It's a great lick to play from uh, A7 to D7. So uh, anytime you have two dominant chords in a row, each lasting two bars, and that happens more often than you think. For example, there are never me, another you. The, uh, we have F7 to B flat 7, the bridge of coquette, there's E7 to A7. Uh, it could happen to you. It's um, F7 to B flat 7 again. Undecided, the bridge, there's D7 to G7. Now there's many songs where this happens. So now you have a really nice phrase. You go to the 9 of the first chord. Of course, there's an open string, but you could also just play it fretted. And then you play a C sharp half diminished. And then, so that's a D7 arpeggio, but instead of an A, you play the 13. And then, of course, the resolution here has to go to C7, but normally you would go to a G major chord probably, right? A7, D7, G, if the song is in G. So then you have to resolve to G in some way. Maybe you do... Right? Or maybe... Or just a normal resolution to a G chord. What I also really like about this lick that it is played on the high E and B string. It gives it an extra punch. So... I would try these fingerings, even though Django is playing with two fingers, but I'm I'm thinking that these are actually the frets he's using, but with two fingers you have to do some weird jumps. So just use four fingers and then 
uh, try to keep it like this. So let's say you play it uh, on the bridge of croquette. So it's E7 to A7 to D. So you start on the fifth of E7, and then you go to the nine. It starts on B3. So you one, two, three, four, one, two. Right? Great phrase. Let's go to the next one. So now we arrive in the second half of the first chorus, and again it starts with four bars of C7 to four bars of A7. And here Django is using some of the other options. So first of all he's connecting uh, the chords by, by, by a chromatic trick, like that, right? It's just a chromatic scale with some embellishment. But also he's playing the same phrase on both C7 and A7. Just moving the, your hand a couple of frets down. So on C7 we get... Right? Then the connection... Same phrase. But then there's this flourish at the end. And so that flourish, to start with that, it's not really clear which notes are being played, but I just play an A major uh, triad, ending on the high E string with an A. It so sounds very much the same uh, thing as Django, but probably he's playing something else, maybe something like that. I don't really hear it. The notes are not completely clean, but this works and it's not too hard. This lick, however, it's pretty hard to do. And the first fingering I had was like this. Four, two, four, one, two. That makes sense. It also looks easy. But for some reason, I always messed it up. My fingers got tangled and I would start playing 4-1 and actually that also sounds nice it's another option but it's not what Django is playing Django is really playing a B flat not an A so then I found that actually playing 3-1 is much easier even though you have to shift position twice right here go up and down again but it just feels better. So there's two options. Either you do it like this, or you change the B flat to an A. Maybe it doesn't sound as good though. Uh, or you can really play four, two, four, one, two. But it, it's very difficult to do it fast, especially because you have to do it two times. You have to do it on A7 again. So uh, go figure that out. I had to uh, put some practice hours into that, but I finally settled on 3-1-3-1 with the position change 2. Let's go to the next phrase. So here we are at a place in the chord progression that often people have trouble, and it's where you have G, E7, A minor, and then C minor, or A half diminished, same thing, D7, G. Now, for some reason, a lot of people miss this A minor in their solos. They just play something G, but really it's nicest if you really resolve to A minor, like A minor would be one chord. And Django does that by playing a real A minor phrase. It's basically a minor arpeggio with enclosures. Enclosing the, the fifth, enclosing the root, fifth again, enclosing the third. So that's one way to do it. Just play enclosures to an A minor arpeggio. So and after that A minor, we get C minor, C minor six, or A, a half diminished. That's just inversions of each other. So if you want to make that clear, you have to play an E flat in that bar. But Django is not doing that, he's just immediately switching to a, a G lick or a D7 G lick. 
and that sounds fine, right? You don't have to play that C minor. So if you just play a very clear A minor, you can just play some D7. Well, if you play a D7 alto, there would be an E flat. Or you just play normal e, uh, D7. Resolving to G, and that is what Django is doing with this very exciting octave phrase. So I wrote those chords in the tab. I don't think it's Django doing it. I think it's actually the rhythm section, but it just sounds so great with the solo that I decided to put it in the solo itself. Uh, you have to make a quick change from the G octave to the chord, and then you play. So voice stroke, then two ghost strokes, and then again a four stroke, up and then two muted, and again voiced. So. And this phrase belongs actually to the next chord, but it's just an announcement of we're gonna go to that weird start of the song C7, and he's really playing, making very clear the next chord is a C chord. But more about the next phrase and the next chorus in another video. That was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, of course, if you wanna learn the next two choruses or download the tab, you can join, like I said before, my Patreon. Go check it out. Uh, patreon.com. If not, I hope you at least uh, consider liking this video, subscribing, hitting the bell icon, that really helps out my channel. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>